Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at modules and functions. So there are two types of modules. There are class modules, and that is you create, say, a form, and you put controls on that form, such as a button, and then you associate code or some kind of event procedure with that button. That is a class module. So say you create a form, you put a button on it, and then the on-click event, you put some code in. So that would be a class module. It's associated with one specific database object. You can also make standard modules, and standard modules create functions that are available throughout the database. So why would you want to do this? Well, simply, if you have a function that you're going to need over and over and over again, why mainly go and put that into a dozen or two dozen whatever different database objects? You can write it once and then just reference it by its function's name. And also, if for some reason you have to modify that function, you don't have to go and edit and change you know, a dozen or two dozen different locations. You change that one function, and then everywhere where you call, call that function, you've modified it already. So let's take a look at how we do this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly make a form because we need, as I said, something to wrap the code around. And generally speaking, when you're making a database, you're probably not going to make modules right away because the module is probably going to fill in a gap. There's something that you need that the database doesn't do automatically on its own, and so you're going to construct a module. So generally, you probably want to create modules this quickly but again I just want to demonstrate how you make a module you declare a function and then how you call that function so let's click on create we'll click on blank form brings us to the design tab we're going to click on view and design view and the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to click on design I'm going to click on properties I'm going to get rid of those selectors really doesn't matter for this demo but it's a good habit to get uh, into so record selectors no and navigation buttons no so again that's really not necessary for this particular demonstration but good habits are worth reinforcing so let's click on the text box we'll just put a text box there and again, we don't have to do anything fancy with this. Okay, so now we have a form and we have a control on that form. What we're going to do is we're going to create the module. And the module will give us a value for this field. So let's go ahead and save the form. And we'll keep it form one because, again, it's not part of a larger database. It's just to demonstrate how this basic process works. So we can go ahead and cl clear the form, close the form, sorry. So we're closing the form. We go up to create, and here's the macro and code section. So there's the class module that I mentioned, which is when you write an event procedure and you attach it to a specific object, such as a form and that kind of thing. But it's, it only is accessible to that form. It's embedded on that form whereas what we're going to do here we're going to create a standard module and that will be accessible to multiple objects so we're going to click on module and we're going to type function and even though it's not saying it there if you do not explicitly expressly declare it as a public function it becomes a public function so in this case, the default is what we want. It's a public function. And now you name it whatever would be meaningful to you. So we'll just just we'll just call this R variable. And then since it's a function, you put in parentheses because you can actually put in arguments, just like other functions. Like if you've seen my tutorial about message box, you choose message box, and then you have several arguments, such as what's the message, what buttons show up, um, what is the uh, title and things like that. So this is going to be very, very bare bones. Again, I'm just trying to show you the end-to-end the -end of creating a module, declaring a function, and then calling that function. So um, we'll make this an integer. 
and it automatically puts in the end function for you. So what you've done is you're saying, here's the name, here's the type of data, but you really haven't put any actual data into it. Now, very often, uh, development environments of different kinds, whether it's Access or you know on the game development side of things, Unity, that often when you create a variable, it will set a default value. Like if it's a uh, if it's a number type variable, then it'll probably default to zero. If it's a string, it'll probably be null. It'll be empty. That kind of thing. So we want to actually put in a, a in a value. So I just wanted to point that out because sometimes this gets a little bit more complicated. So say you were declaring this as a date. Well, putting date here doesn't actually grab the date. It just says, okay, format this like a date would be formatted. So it's important to differentiate between what you're formatting it and actually putting a value in there. So our variable equals 25. Okay. We'll save that. And we can just call it module one. And let's go back. Now what we're going to do, we're going to open up the form again. We're going to go to home. We're going to go to design view. And just want to take a moment to point out that when you see property sheet over here, it all depends what you have selected. So this is currently looking at the properties of the entire form as a whole because you have the dot selected here. So make sure that if you're trying to change the properties of the form as a whole or an individual control, make sure you have the proper selection. So if you click here, you now have this control and the property sheet is changed. So what we want is data. We're gonna put in a default value. Then type in equals, and there you go, our variable. And as you can see, it lets you know it's a user defined function. So we'll double click to select that. And there's the parameters, well, there's the argument, excuse me, there is the open parenthesis for the argument, we'll just close it, click away. And now what you've done is you've called that variable. You've, well, excuse me, you've called that function, which happens to be a value. So what we're gonna do is we save this and then we run it, okay. See, there we go. So how to close it for it to actually update. And there you go. So 25 is the value that we put into the module. Now I'll give you a couple more examples just so you get the idea of how this works, but it's pretty much that simple. And more than likely, whatever you're doing, your functions will be much more complex because you could easily do this without creating a module. The idea is, or should I say a standard module? The idea is this would be something, maybe it's uh, a process to clean a, a value, like to trim away spaces and things like that. Um, and it's something that you use in so many places that you want to be able to recycle it. You don't want to have to code that over and over again. You code it once and then you just call it. So we'll close form one. And what we'll do is we just create a new module rather than overwriting that one. So module function and we'll call this one call it the date and it's date and this is what I was talking about a moment ago so even though there's a function called date, you haven't actually grabbed the date. You're just saying this is how you want it to be formatted. So if you were to run it like this, I think it would default to like 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. So again, that uh, when you declare what type of value you're holding, there usually is a default value. But you haven't explicitly assigned a value. You're just formatting it. Okay, so the date equals and we'll use this nifty little command or function rather called now oh, sorry about the semicolon i was thinking of c sharp my apologies 
So the date with parentheses and it's as date. The date is equal to now with parentheses. And then we will save that and it will be module two. And now we'll go back to our form. Run our form. Go to home. Design view. We'll click on. Now let's create another box. So I clicked on text box. Just drag that there. And then again, data. Default value. Equals. And there we go. The date. That would not be there if we hadn't created it. So double click there. Click away. Oops, sorry. My apologies. Need to close the parenthesis. And then we'll save the form. Close it. And there you go. So now this one has a constant that we chose and this one has a changing value because since this is month day year hour minute second then that means this would change if we were to run it again okay so i think that's about it for this one again the actual functions that i showed you are ones you probably wouldn't use because it's easy enough to put a date or a a, a constant value uh, into a form but it gives you the basic functionality of creating a module, declaring a function, and then calling that function. So if there's more complex ones you want to see, just let me know. So uh, leave a comment and say, how do I create a module that does this or that? And I'll see if I can do that for you. If it's very specific to the database you're using, it might be hard to do it. But if it's a general question like, I want a function that cleans a value, it trims it and things like that. Just leave a comment, let me know, and I'll see if I can work something up for you. Okay, that should do it, and I hope this has been helpful.